Yo, how's it going guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you a pretty cool little helicopter storage base, a little hangar where you can have three or four helicopters on rotation, but comfortably can store two to three. The fourth one would have to sit outside. The doors are also automatic on this base, so flying up to it, the doors will open automatically from three squares away thanks to the HBRF sensor. And then on your way out, there is a pad that you roll over, which opens the door for you. And we have a timer so that it doesn't close on you. And I'm not the best pilot, so um, I'm not the best example of how efficiently this base works. But if you're a better pilot, this is a great way to store a couple helicopters so that they don't decay quickly and uh, you'll have a nice safe place to repair them and to come back from let's say oil rig dome or launch or whatever and then the doors will just open automatically and if you're being followed by somebody the doors will not open for them only people authed on the tc this is something that's not necessarily only for clans either a solo duo could build this base and um, a few of the components within this base also serve as a battery storage slash charger area for your main base since we're putting a windmill on the top we might as well have a couple batteries that we can wire over to main for other things like automatic doors traps etc and you can get it to go quite far if you set it up correctly so that was the build cost and upkeep and this is the circuit for the base and you see on the top right those are our two batteries that we can expand into further circuits for other things such as lights doors whatever else you might want to use it for you don't have to add that part if you don't want to it would just subtract a couple of these electrical branches that we're using so to build this base is very simple you just need about 15k stone and if you're not going to be adding the batteries in the back it reduces that cost a little more although if you want your windmill to be higher up if you're in a lower area like we are over here you might want to raise your windmill up to get more power if you're going to be diverting some of that to your main base because the higher the windmill the more power it'll generate so the outer shell of this on the first floor is going to be all shop fronts so that we can see a 360 degree when we're leaving our base this is especially helpful if you don't have high walls around your base or you're building this outside of your compound that way when you're landing you can double check to make sure that nobody's outside door camping you so to finish off the first floor we'll put triangles around here and leave this last one open you can use whatever you want to get up to the second floor i recommend using a furnace just because it's very easy and if you have auto crouch enabled you can get up here pretty quickly the square with the garage door you don't have to add if you don't want to have large batteries um, for whatever reason you might you just might not want to have power for anything else from this windmill you just want the windmill for this base that's fine just don't add that square in the back but if you do want two large batteries back there make sure that you don't put the shop fronts down until you have the batteries placed so that we can face the wiring aspect of them inwards to make it easier on ourselves so this thing we just built in front of our airlock is for stability for the landing pad on the top and then we're going to place walls all the way around the second floor because this is where we're going to place our tc and some drop boxes the tc um, you can cut it however you want put a door i choose to put windows on it also i accidentally put that triangle in the wrong spot you're going to want to break the one behind there if you place the twig down destroy that real quick i'm sorry if you're following along but yeah tc will go over here and you can block it off however you want if you do put a triangle in front of the window just remember that you can replace the tc by jumping on the top of this triangle and looking down if you ever do get raided that's an easy way to put your tc back in one of these types of tc loot rooms is just by standing on the top of this triangle that we're putting this box on After you're happy with the little drop box loot room that you've put on the second floor, block it off with the garage door. You don't have to do this part if you don't want any boxes in here, but this is where the TC will go. We'll place another furnace to get up to the top, and then we will place the walls and floors for our hangar and for the landing pad.
Now at this point you can use a windmill or solar panels, it's up to you, but if you use solar panels you will need to have a large battery um, that charges during the day and is in use at night so that when you do come home if you have any lights distinguishing the front from the back of this or any lights in the front so you can see the doors um, you'll want to make sure you have that type of circuit in place so that the battery takes over during the night time. That's why I recommend using a windmill just because it'll always be giving power. So now down here we're going to be placing our batteries facing inward so that we can wire them correctly. So if you take a look at the shop front the left side of this needs to be placed on the left so that the battery is able to be placed with the shop front too. So these batteries are pretty much just going to be charging all of the time through this electrical branch which all excess power from the windmill will go into these batteries and we are able to control it how we please, use it for something else, direct it back into some lights for the base, whatever you might want to use them for is up to you. Um, I would probably just use one of them for lights in the base. So we have a main battery and a backup battery. The main battery gets a set amount of power from the left side of the branch and the other battery gets all the excess power so I would set it to like 20 and if you have your windmill really high up in the air the other one might be getting upwards of a hundred power into it full charge but yeah um, you don't have to worry about that if you do not want the batteries uh, because if you have the windmill on the top that's really all you need for the hanger itself and you could always add batteries in later just by placing a double door or garage door on that back square uh, and you can worry about it later but we're going to begin wiring this up the windmill will go into this electrical branch that we're putting in the airlock on our third floor so that um, no explosive damage no helicopter damage will tamper with any of our wiring and then we'll begin adding everything else a pressure pad will go on the right side in the middle doesn't really matter which way it's facing we'll put our HBRF sensor out in the middle of this square and then two door controllers on each garage door close the garage door pair it to the door. Make sure that you do unlock any code locks or key locks that you put on the door before you pair it. That little green light has to show up otherwise it didn't work correctly. So the right side of this electrical branch which is our main power from the windmill will go down for our batteries which we are using for whatever else we might want to do with them. Um, I'm just trying to make the wires all nice and neat along the ceiling because I hate seeing wires flying around and then that will go into the power end of that and our batteries will begin charging as soon as that process is complete so if you only have two electrical branches and a large battery and a windmill then you can set this circuit up right away and worry about the rest later and begin charging your batteries we're going to have a second electrical branch now we're using these instead of splitters so that we can control the power down to a single unit without having to do anything complicated with the splitters this is just easier and overall cheaper for what we're going to be doing and allows us to have full control over every single unit of power that comes down from the windmill so we're going to put the left side of the the first splitter from main power into the second electrical branch and we will begin setting up our doors so the output of this timer will go down into this door controller which is our exit the output of the pressure pad will go back inside to activate the timer I would recommend setting the timer to more than 10 seconds but less than 25 seconds as you don't want anybody laddering up flying in while you're taking off. So the output on the left side of this electrical branch will power the timer and just remember each electrical branch the left side we can limit the amount of power that comes out of it and then the rest of the power going into the electrical branch flows out the right side so that's how we're going to be controlling so as you can see we're going to be adding another electrical branch with the rest of the power coming from the secondary electrical branch and then we will be powering the hbrf sensor with that so as you can see it does not work yet because we haven't set any numerical values on the left side of the electrical branches so the second one is going to be three the the main power electrical branch is going to be nine and the top one I believe is three it's um one power per pass through item so if the electrical branch on the bottom is taking in 87 it'll output 86 into
into the next electrical branch. So we have nine objects coming out of the left side of our main power. Um, so just make sure you're setting each value right. We only have nine deployables, which means we need to set the bottom one to nine. And then the second one goes through a timer and a door controller and an electrical branch. So we need to set that one to three. And then the top one is just for the rest, which is an HBRF sensor and a door controller. So we will set that one to Th two or three as well. I do believe it is three minimum to power two items. But overall, you don't need to be wasting more than nine or 10 units of power to make all of this work. So we'll just take the last output on the electrical branch to power this HBRF sensor and the door controller. If I did a bad job at explaining that or you just don't understand, just make sure that the first electrical branch connected to the windmill has enough power coming through it. So set that one to the highest number. The second electrical branch coming off of the right of main power has enough to power the next electrical branch and the items coming off of it. So that's all you gotta do is just make sure the biggest number is on the bottom electrical branch and then the other two i'm pretty sure are about the same number and you'll be good to go so you'll see here i have the top one set to two the second one set to three and the bottom one set to nine those are the exact values i was trying to explain earlier why we're doing this and how it works so the left side of the electrical branch is the one we control so the nine power is coming out of the left side the rest of the power coming into the electrical branch goes out of the right side just wanted to explain that for anybody who doesn't necessarily understand that or wants to know why I'm not using a splitter is because um, we don't want to waste any of the power coming in because we're trying to get the rest of the power going to the batteries to charge them as fast as possible. But that's all I got for you guys for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you like the build. If you have any easier ways or easier circuits to do something similar for this, let me know. I would also recommend doing something like this on the ceiling where you have red lights in the front and blue lights in the back. All of these blueprints are found in boxes on the road, but the HBRF sensor you're going to have to find in military crates, which is unfortunate, but is probably not going to be the most difficult thing to get your hand across especially if you can trade somebody that does have one or someone is selling one in a shop so i hope you guys enjoyed the video that's all i got for you guys today check out the links in my description and i'll catch you next time